The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, that's AFCC, Mr. Ola Olukoyode, has emphasized the need for transparency and accountability amongst public office holders, highlighting that the problem in Nigeria is a system that allows fraud to thrive rather than the people themselves. He makes his remarks during a visit by the Niger Delta Development Commission Managing Director, Dr. Samuel Buku, and his delegation to the EFCC headquarters in Abuja. Olukoyade praised the NDDC's Rewind to Rebirth initiative, expressing optimism about the Commission's commitment to change and its potential to become a symbol of pride and integrity. He assured continued collaboration between the EFCC and the NDDC, especially in strengthening systems and processes, and reiterated the EFCC's commitment to fighting corruption. Dr. Obuku thanked the EFCC for its role in financial recoveries that have aided the NDDC's project to the Niger Delta region. He advocated for enhanced collaboration and technical support from the EFCC, particularly in training NDDC staff in financial management and corporate governance. Okay, the EFCC and the NDDC, let's get your thoughts on the story. <laughs> um, another jamboree, courtesy visits. There are too many court visits that happen in Nigeria that uh, leaves one wondering, are they really necessary? Does the NDDC... Now, on face value, there is nothing wrong with paying court visit, but do they really need to visit the AFCC for AFCC to do what they should do or to thank them for recovering funds? I've been issued, the AFCC was set up to fight corruption and get things right. So it is not... I I don't see these things as fantastic way to go. Oh, the good thing is, like he said, what we have been saying here is that we have a system problem, and I think everybody should just get his hand on the deck. Let's solve this system problem. So these issues of recovering funds, you know, by the time you recover the fund, development has been delayed. So yeah, it's good fund has been recovered, but it's a cold comfort. And what? Beyond the talk, what is the measures being put in place to ensure that new funds or even the recovered one does not take flight again, only for another set to recover it? Let's stop this circle of recovering funds and get to work. The Niger Delta is a region that is in their need of development. The essence of setting up the NDDC in the Avenue Show was to encourage development, but over two decades of setting up that board, um, development has not come as the people I want to expect. Yeah, probably they have scored some point here and there, but more needs to be done. So the issue of corruption and transparency is something that should be tackled beyond the theory, beyond this visit. There should be a commitment to get it done. All right. It's, is it looking like we are beginning to blame a lot of our, um, should I say irresponsibilities or things that we do not do on system failure? Yeah, I, if we say uh, in this uh, story about the visit of the EFCC ch chairman to NDDC, uh, let's look at the NDDC as it is. We know that this body was sent, set up for a good purpose in terms of developing the Niger Delta region. Uh, but we find out that there is lack of transparency in terms of uh, issuing or awarding of uh, contracts and all that. And for you to get a job or a contract from the yes, uh, NDDC, you will have to be, it's either the top management have hired you or mobilized you to carry out that job on their behalf. Is that not but, just an assumption? Uh, well, I can say because I've had, I've come in contact with some of these uh, contractors. Uh, <clears throat> there are some terms of loyalty, uh, terms of compromise that you have to reach for you to be awarded a job, a contract. Uh, but some people feel like it's just some Nigerians who tried to get the contract and didn't. That came together and said, oh, concluded and said, 
for them to get contracts. No, it's not that. Agency. It's not that. Because you for you, know who. for you to get such contract, because that's the area I'm trying to bring up about the corruption. The corrupt, the system <clears throat> is corrupt. Even to be awarded a contract, currently it is contracts are being awarded secretly. It's not unlike before. You find people who go to tender for jobs and all that. It's not. It's not like that now. So, if a job is given to uh, a company and the company fails to carry out the job, uh, because that's part of what they are looking at, uh, fund recovery, that you are giving money and you didn't execute the job and all of that. So they want to recover some of the money. Uh, but the fact is that there, is, there are terms and conditions that followed the award of these contracts and even the payments that are given. So when, it, when a new administration comes in, they will now begin to investigate those jobs that have not been completed. That's where the recovery comes in. Uh, so by the time they investigate and they find out that uh, so so company could not uh, execute the job, and then they say, okay, refund whatever uh, money you've uh, collected and all of that. So there is no need for all this. For you to give a job to a company, make it open, a public thing. Make it transparent so that there will be different bidders. And at the end of it all, you compare the biddings of yes. all these companies. And then the management will transparently also look at, okay, this company bidder, this, this, that. Okay, out from their own uh, office, they make the final selection that this company, this is this. And there are milestones for each job that you have to do so-so job to this point, to this point then so so amount of money will be given to you, not just taking all the loops up of the, when the job is not executed, and then you give the person the money. What do you expect? He will abscond with the money. So the, if the right things are done, there will not be need for fund recovery because there is a waste, it's a waste of time. Time and resources are wasting. So I'm looking at a situation where the NDDC uh, the, both the government, they should look at how they can change this corrupt system mm. in terms of uh, changing or bringing policies that will be more transparent in uh, bidding, in awarding All of right. contracts, so that we will not be hearing that uh, funds are recovered. recovered. Because there is a good, a, a working system does not have such. Mm. You don't mm. can find such so that uh, you are recovering for, for a fund that has been uh, assigned for a particular project and you are going to recover it. Uh, it's, it sounds strange mm. because it's not the, it's not the, uh, the way or the normal okay. uh, practice, uh, not the normal system. So the corruption in our government in our uh, system entirely needs to be checkmate by changing the policies as well as uh, properly you know putting eyes on this management so-called management of this board and all of those people who are there because what they are there doing is uh, uh, you give me 10%, 20%, 50%, and all of those percentage in terms of uh, all right. um, projects, yeah. all of that should stop. They all should right. do all they can do to stop it so that we will not waste our time in recovering right. funds that so, are meant for uh, developmental so purposes. All those um, allegations should be looked into, investigations yes, should be carried exactly, out. Exactly. You know, you, you also talked in the same light where you, you talked about the NDDC, what it's meant for, the reason it was created. And then looking at the, at the journey of the NDDC from its inception till now, and then um, you, you mentioned some corrupt practices going on, just like the doctor has also mentioned. But does it mean that there have been, been any positive impact from the NDDC, the Niger Delta?
Delta. How would you, how do you see the impact of the NDDC in the Niger Delta? There was actually a time when some people were asking for the scrap of the NDDC during the forensic audit period, the off the mic period, and all of those things that happened that period. A lot of the stories we've been hearing from the NDDC have been stories of corruption, yeah, corruption there. Does it mean that the NDDC have not impacted the Niger Delta in any positive light? Um, like I said earlier, they may have scored some points here and there, but um, how much of those points has been able to take us out of the woods? The um, reason for the creation of the body was not to score some isolated points in the developmental metrics, but to ensure that we get out of the woods in the Niger Delta. If you have ever visited um, the rural areas of the Niger Delta, you still know that many communities in the Niger Delta are backward. They still grapple a lot, you know. Some and, basic things. Yes, and at times, it's so bad that some communities don't even have something basic as toilets and good drinking water i mean here in the city we don't here we may not have you know this um pipe born water but at least you can make do with alternatives buying of um pure water and bottled water and the rest of them some of these communities don't have that, that luxury of buying water both mm. for economic reasons and how the waters get to them they are in com there are communities that are isolated from everybody the only means of getting there is water transport and when you say water transport, you are not talking about one standardized ferry. No, it's um, a system that if you're on a journey, you practically have your heart in your hand as long as the journey lasts because basics like um, life jackets, they don't have it. So you can see how there, it, it's a daily confrontation with death, the systems you have there. So yeah, the Niger Delta Commission may have done well. I won't be of the opinion that it should be completely scrapped, but it should be strengthened. But let's, why we talk about that to scrap, scrap or not, we also have in mind that some of these agencies, the reasons that we are set up is just wanting a testament that we had a failed system. If not for our failed system, some of these interventionist agencies wouldn't have been there because we have a whole lot of ministries that carry out the things this agencies do. If you talk of provision of water, there is a Ministry of Water Resources. If you talk of, there is a Ministry of Transportation, yes. there is a Ministry of, you know, Works and Housing. But because these agencies or ministries has not done what they should do, interventionist agencies like the NDDCs we are set up, but unfortunately, they have not been able to answer all the questions. Nobody is deceived that these developmental questions can be answered in one fell swoop, but there is need to see a commitment to answering those uh, questions beyond the, the theory of, you know, every year you present a score sheet of wonderful projects done, but in reality, mm -hmm. the communities where this project have been done, really know what you're talking about doesn't really help. So, scrapping the NDDC, I would say no, <coughs> but there is a need for institutional strengthening in Nigeria, whatever agencies you have set up, they ought to be strengthened and maybe um, collaboration with the government so we won't have a repetition of project like we have had in the past because this repetition of project also gives rise to corruption at the middle of it. If I get a contract to produce this table and you also get a contract to produce the same table and what we need here is just one table at the end of the day it's one of the two of us that will produce the table what happens to the other person that got funding for the table your guess is as good as my that money goes but if there is collaboration you know you know that okay okay within this um fiscal year. These are the areas you are focusing on. The state government or local government can say, okay, since you're focusing on this area, let's take our attention to somewhere else. So if you're going to do road A, fantastic, let me channel my energy on road B. We can't have a situation where you have awarded contract for road A, I have awarded contract for road A, right. he has awarded contract for road A. At the end of the day, road A is just one road. Mm. Mean. So these are uh, there is a need for strengthening of our institutions, and it more talked about transparency shouldn't just be a theory. We should see it 
working. Like doctor said, you know, in awarding of contract, the bidding process, there is an art, a procurement art. It should be followed. People should see that, okay, you know, why some of these accusations of, oh, I didn't get the job because I don't know anybody, why they gain prominency is because the system is not transparent. If there is a transparent system that says, this is what you need to meet to get this job, this is what you need. At the end of the day, a number of us be dead. This guy's got it. And it's clear that what is criteria, what criteria you are used to give him that job. I look at it and I didn't meet this criteria. Or maybe I met them, but he had a better standing than me. Some of these accusation will not be there. And even when they come, the people can easily see it for themselves that because the spreadsheet is there for everybody to see. But when the documents are secret, kept in mm. house, and you're talking about transparency, it doesn't work, all then right. it gives room for all manner of. Corruption. All right, thank you.